Data Studio gets really fun when you start adding multiple pages, multiple reports um, to your dashboard. Um, this you can get as fancy as you want. I'm not even sure that there's technically a limit on the number of pages you can add to a Data Studio dashboard. But for the purpose of this course, we're just going to build two. Um, I've never seen any more than 10 or 15 on a, on a dashboard. But so our first, our first page, let's go back there, was just daily, kind of like daily averages of tweets per user. Um, but on the second page that we create, we're going to do some deeper dive analysis on the actual tw individual tweets that were sent out to get a feel for what kind of tweeters uh, the people on this, the like seven or eight handles on this list are. Um, what types of tweets do they send out? Do they tweet more um, on any given day of the week or time of the day? Um, stuff like that. So before we go um, into some of those nitty gritty details, first let's talk about basic um, page structure and these filters that we created before, right? Because we want to maintain these same date filters and username filters on our other pages. So to create a new page, you just simply do uh, click add a new page here. I already did this, created this tweet types page. But you'll notice on here, there isn't any date filter. Uh, it's not on the page. And so the important thing here is to note the difference between what's called uh, report level uh, filters in Data Studio, which will show up on every single page that you have, um, and page level filters, which will only show up on one page. So as one example, this username filter, it only applies to this, da this tweet's data source. So if you remember, each tab in this Google Sheet, the tweets and daily totals, there are different data source in Data Studio. So different data sources have different filters because you can only filter on one data source at a time. So in this case, we have two data sources, we have two different pages, each page has its own data source, and each page will have its own filter for, for that reason. So if you look at the settings for this filter, and if you right click on it, this is currently a what's called a page level filter because it only applies to this data source on this page um, of the report. So if we were to make it report level, it would show up on every page that we have, but we don't want to do that. So we want to leave it as is. But what we do want to make report level, if we're talking about filters here, is this date range. So if you right click on the date range, um, you'll notice that you can click make report level. And then if we go back to our second page, our tweet types page, you'll notice that it's now showing up on this page, this, uh, this date range filter. And if you click make page level, that will revert that change and bring it back to just being on that page. So the important thing, I know that sounds kind of complicated, but the important thing to note here is the difference between page level filters, which apply to only one page on your dashboard, and report level filters, which apply to every page on your dashboard. For, commonly, I'll only use um, or recommend using report level filters on with date ranges that you want to show up on every single page of your dashboard. Generally, everything else, I'll just leave it as page level because um, you're just filtering that data source. So hope that makes sense. The page level, report level distinction. If you play or simply play around with it by right clicking and, and seeing what those different settings do, you'll pretty quickly get a feel for what that really means. So now that we got a, a hang for that, we're going to dive into some kind of more complicated uh, calculated columns and how the, these will let us do some more interesting analysis on our, on our Twitter data.